and today we're going to show you how to use SimDiag to capture debug logging while reproducing an issue. If you haven't already downloaded SimDiag, you can do so by opening your SEP GUI, clicking the help button, and click download semantic diagnostic tool. I've already done so, so we're going to open up our sim diag. Now when you're performing SEP troubleshooting you have to be logged into the machine as an administrator. A domain administrator is fine too as long as you have full power equal to a local administrator. It's the only way to capture any type of worthwhile data. So we right click on SimDiag and run as administrator. We're using the latest version. SimDiag always checks for the latest version and downloads it. If it's not the latest version it will shut it down and bring it back up in the latest version. We accept the EULA. Open this up so we can see what's going on. We are have the options of using self-help, start scan, threat analysis, start scan, and collect all data for support. We're doing this at at the request of semantic support. We also know that here is the client and the version that we have so we're going to collect data for support. SimDiag's constantly expanding and uh, covering more and more semantic products. So the list will continue to grow here. But we're going to only collect data for endpoint protection client and it's already checked so we click next. All data has already been pre-selected but we don't have debug logging turned on yet so we put a check mark in the endpoint protection client and we notice that we have 10 minutes on the clock that's going to give us 10 minutes to reproduce our issue in some cases it may take longer than this and your support people at Semantic can give you an idea of how many minutes to actually put in there. At this point we could move forward and actually click next because all of the default setup for collecting debugging is already done. But I do want to show you this. If you click the advanced button you can see the configuration for standard debugging which is what this is is already in place. If we were going to, or at the request of Semantic, do WPP reboot only logging, we would click this one. This would initiate a reboot, which would start WPP logging when the machine started to collect data as soon as possible. If we click Silent only, we'll get strictly client communications between the uh, client and the SEP, um, the SEP manager. Both of these without the reboot part of the WPP logging are actually in the standard logging itself. So we're just going to click OK here. We're ready to go. We click Next. The system says we have to turn on debugging. We have to actually engage it. So we're going to enable it. We can see it walking through the system, setting up the debugging keys, and stopping and restarting the client, which turns it on. Notice it says WPP logging on there. We're going to collect all the data. WPP logging, by the way, is uh, very detailed and hands-on intensive. So when you do perform WPP logging, you'll do it with the help of semantic support. Logging is turned on. We're now on the clock and we're seeing that we are counting down. At this point we reproduce the issue. We may have an application that we suspect SEP is interfering with. This would be the time you open the application and cause the problem that you saw or try to cause it. 
we're going to pretend that we just did something in order to reproduce some issue and we're going to click next. Now we're going to disable the logging and as soon as it's disabled and the client comes back on we start collecting data. Now at this point we have a lot of data sets to go through so what we're going to do is do a little time delay and come back when it's finished collecting the data. We're back. It took about five minutes for this to actually run. It wasn't too long. The bigger the issue, the longer the reproduction, the logs would be bigger and it would take a little more time. You have the option now to open or update a support case or you're responding to an open evidence request. Semantic support would be sending you uh, login information in order to do so. We're not going to do that this time. What we're going to do is cancel and save locally. Make sure that you fill out all the information and very specifically describe what the issue is. All this information is actually entered into the results of the SimDiag run and it may be viewed by your support person, engineering, or development in order to resolve the issue. It's helpful if the information is available immediately. Notice that it already named the uh, SimDiag results and time stamped it for when it happened. And we're going to save it directly to the desktop. And we're done. At this point, we can actually close out the SIM Diag. Now we can look at the desktop to see the file. We can exit. And we notice that we have our results file here. We hope you've learned something from this video today. How to use SimDiag to capture debug logging while reproducing an issue.